So I'd like to invite the next speaker, Dr. Abhijit Chandra. The topic is endoluminal surgery for rectal prolapse. Over to you, sir. Good evening, everyone. My thanks to the organizers. It's the last presentation of the day. Uh, can we go back? Can we start again? And this is just the video which is playing. Can you go back to the slides, please? The first slide, yeah. Yeah. So, what we'll be discussing today is a new technique of uh, endoluminal fixation of rectal prolapse. A little background, the procedure, video procedure, then little outcomes. What are the possible future directions, limitations of our procedure? Endoluminal techniques for complete rectal prolapse are scant and mostly experimental. Anterior fixation of rectum to the anterior abdominal wall was long described in 1939 by Pemberton, but somehow forgotten. We recently reported about two years back a novel transanal endoluminal treatment for rectal prolapse and its subsequent modifications. Essentially, this procedure has two steps. First, ventral suture rectopexy, which involves fixing the anterior wall of the rectum to the undersurface of anterior abdominal wall using percutaneous transfascial sutures by an indigenously designed endoscopic uh, fixator device, which we'll talk about. And then the posterior wall of the rectum is fixed to the underlying sacral promontory by, uh, through a submucosal tunnel developed five centimeter below the sacral promontory and fixed, fixed by a tack fixation device. First, the anterior fixation of the rectum and for this, we have designed an endorectal fixator device which has a transimulating silicon gel head and a hollow shaft incorporating an inflexible endoscope. We use a normal high definition endoscope used for a poem procedure and CO2 insufflation is used. And the standard injector device, TTKJ knife and an Irby knife, hybrid knife is used. These are all devices which are standard for a poem procedure which you saw in the morning. Additionally, we use a gel point path which is a transanal device to enter into the anal rectum and we use an articulating rally attack device for fixation. The anterior fixation of the rectum is first begun, as we see, by placing a marking suture at the apex of the rectum. Now, this marking suture serves as a reference point for future endoluminal sutures, which we will take subsequently. Next, using the endorectal fixator device, we reduce the rectum, and we delineate the urinary bladder by injecting contrast uh, through the foleys, and you can see the rectum and the urinary bladder separate. Next, this device is used to push the anterior wall of the rectum against the undersurface of anterior abdominal wall in the suprapubic area. As you can see here, you can see the silicon gel head and the fixator on fluoro. And through the hollow shaft of the fixator device, we pass an endoscope to visualize the anterior wall of the rectum from inside, as you can see here, through the silicon gel head. You can see the silicon gel head and the anterior rectal wall pushed against the undersurface of anterior abdominal wall. Now, we transilluminate this through the hollow shaft by an endoscope and pass through a stab incision two t two zero PDA sutures, transgressing the anterior abdominal wall and the anterior rectal wall, entering into the silicon gel head of the endorectal fixator device placed inside the inner rectum. As you can see, the needles with the sutures entering into the hollow shaft of the femur visualized by an endoscope, caught on the silicon gel head. Both these sutures on the needle are brought outside the inner rectum, as you can see here. Next, the needles are cut off and a broad base knot is tied outside, which is then pulled side the lumen of the inner rectum by making taut the free ends of the sutures at the anterior abdominal wall. You can see the knot entering into the lumen of the inner rectum, fixing the anterior wall of the rectum to the undersurface of anterior, of anterior abdominal wall. And this is done by tying the free ends of the sutures at the anterior abdominal wall. Two or three such sutures are placed to fix the anterior rectal wall. Next, the posterior wall of the rectum is fixed to the anterior abdominal, uh, uh, to the posterior uh, sacrum. And for this, we visualize the sacrum in a prone position in both lateral as well as anterior posterior views. This is important to stay in the midline, which is essentially a vascular area. And next, five centimeters below the sacral promontory, we develop a submucosal lab, much like uh, as we do for a poem procedure for ecclesia cardia, which we saw in the morning. And then we try and enter the submucosal rectal space by making deep the submucosal incision. And as you see, the fibers, submucosal fibers are, see, are seen here, and they're gradually burned. And we widen the space by spray coagulation of these submucosal fibers. Larger vessels are caught by a coag grasper and burnt to avoid bleeding. And we simultaneously inject 
and spray coagulate these submucosal fibers and gradually deepen this tunnel. As you can see here, you can see the mucosal flap of the rectum on one side, that is on the right side. You can see the mucosal flap on one side and the circular rectal muscle is on the opposite side. This tunnel is gradually deepened to reach up to the sacral promontory which is ascertained by using a fluoro. And it's not only a longitudinal extension of the tunnel but also we make it mild so that you can enter the ready tag device to be used later. You can see the muscle fibers gradually being spray coagulated and the tunnel being widened. Nowadays we use the Erby hybrid knife which has the advantage of simultaneous hydro dissection as well as spray coagulation in the same instrument. You can inject and burn at the same time. This is the completed tunnel. You can see the rectal mucosa on one side and the muscle on the other. Next, the gel point path, which I showed earlier, is placed onto the anus and fixed by sutures. This has about three ports and another port for insufflation. And through one of the ports, under endoscopic guidance, we enter into the submucosal tunnel and introduce the ready tag device and simultaneously visualizing on the fluoro staying in the midline. And you strike the ready tag device onto the sacral promontory as seen on the fluoro and you can actually feel the sacral promontory and then through this tunnel you fire long rally tag devices about 8 millimeters in length to fix the posterior rectal wall or the mesorectum onto the sacral promontory as you can see here. You can see the mark marking suture which, has be, uh, which signifies reduced prolapse rectum which was seen initially and the, all fixation is done above this marking suture. Four or five such tags are placed fixing the posterior rectal wall onto the sacral promontory through this tunnel. Hemostasis is secured and then the mucosal entry site is closed by through the scope clips. Four to such clips are used to close the site and this completes the procedure. So we published this in DCR uh, about one and a half years back and you can so see all the parameters, all the functional parameters including ODS scores, SMIS scores and all the pressures on inner rectal manometry were significantly improved after the procedure as post-operative defography showed uh, increase in uh, resting tones, in decrease in inner rectal angle and decrease in pelvic descent. Uh, average hospital day stay was about two days and the op operating time initially of course when the learning curve was there it was about three and a half hours but we've now reduced it to about two hours. Initially we did ha have our series of complications including rectorectal abscesses and skin infections but all were responded to conservative measures. And then <clears throat> one of uh, the other modification or you can see uh, extension of the procedure is fixing vagina as well as rectal simultaneously through the the same technique, again published this March in DCR. Uh, this uh, is actually a modified version of our technique which involves the intervention radiologist as well to expand the retropubic space. We use an endovaginal fixator which is much smaller than the endorectal fixator to push the prolapse vagina similarly onto the undersurface of suprapubic abdominal wall as you can see here. And then we insert two Vigon needles through a small stab incision similarly as we did for anterior fixation of the rectum as you can see here the Vigon needles entering into uh, the endovaginal fixator transgressing the abdominal wall and the anterior vaginal wall. Two needles are passed through this 3 millimeter incision, stab incision and through these needles we pass two, two zero PDA sutures which are threaded through these needles to enter into the hollow shaft of the endovaginal fixator as you can see here. And both these sutures once they enter into the hollow of the endovaginal fixator, they are brought outside similarly and the sutures are then cut off the fixator and are not tied outside which is again pulled inside the lumen of the vagina as you will see here by making taut the free ends at the suprapubic abdominal wall. You can see the knot going inside entering into the lumen of the vagina on by the side of the cervix, it's essentially the lateral fornices on one side, you can see the cervix in the middle and by 
tying the suture at the anterior abdominal wall, you fix the vagina. S a similar set of second suture is passed on the opposite side and it enters the opposite fornices of the vagina, again transgressing the abdominal wall and through the gel head and the needles entering into the lumen of the endovaginal fixator, again confirmed on floor here. And through these Vigon needles, again, two zero PDA sutures are threaded through to enter into the lumen of the endovaginal fixator, as can be seen here. For this, we use a bronchoscope because the endovaginal fixator has a much lesser diameter. Both these sutures are again brought outside, are not tied, and then this broad base knot is again pulled inside the lumen of the vagina by making taut the free ends of the sutures at the abdominal wall surface. And you can see the knot again being pulled inside and being placed at the lateral phonics, opposite lateral phonics by the side of the cervix, as can be seen here. Again, fixing the vagina in the suprapubic area. You can see the actual reduction of the prolapse by pulling the sutures. This has the advantage of even reducing incontinence, stress incontinence often associated with these patients because of the displays uh, vesico-uteral junction. <clears throat> By tying these knots on either sides, the vaginal fixation is achieved. So this is the cervix which both the knots place by the side. And this is the completed procedure. And that's the post-operative picture. This was first published in the Journal of Gastroenterology. I'm thankful to Dr. Ghoshal for this. And this was about two years back. Subsequently, we had a series of publications, first just about isolated rectal prolapse, again in disease colon and rectum, and recently in March for the combined procedure, and we have another manuscript in the pipeline. So the limitation of these procedures is that it's a small series, initial series, with a short follow-up. It needs validation in a larger cohort of patients with a longer follow-up. Posterior fixation of rectum, as you can see, is demanding. It requires skill, especially in third phase endoscopy, which not many surgeons have. But beyond the nerving curve, this procedure is safe. It avoids general anesthesia, avoids use of a mesh. It's truly minimally invasive, as we can see. And thus, to conclude, this is a new minimally invasive endoluminal treatment for complete rectal prolapse. The procedure avoids major abdominal incision, use of a mesh or general anesthesia. It can potentially be performed as an outpatient procedure with minimal morbidity and enhanced recovery. This is especially true for the anterior part of fixation, which can actually be done in sedation just as we do normal colonoscopy. It can simultaneously address both prolapse of uh, anterior compartment as well as uh, posterior compartment, as we saw. And in future, I presume the use of an endoluminal robot would probably enhance the technical ease of the procedure. And however, it needs validation in the long term in a larger cohort of patients. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Bijit. Yeah. For questions on the floor, please. Please use the mic to ask a question. Or please, someone pass the mic to him. First of all, I congratulate you for your wonderful presentation. The procedures are good, well acceptable. But my idea is what is your experience about the long-term follow-up, particularly in these fistulous cases, in these uh, prolapse cases. Sir, as I said, this is the limitation. This is a new procedure. We have a follow-up of about two and a half to three years. So, uh, and that we've published. You know, we recently published. Uh, the recurrence rate is anything between 5 to 10 percent, which is acceptable for a new procedure. And uh, uh, we had about three recurrences, we, which we could refix by the same technique, you know. Now, the advantages of this technique is that you actually visualize the apex. Many a time, if you see uh, ventral rectopexy, which is now the standard of care, especially in the West, for rectal prolapse, it has two problems. It doesn't address to posterior wall of the rectum. So most of the recurrences after ventral suture, uh, ventral mesh rectopexy are posterior. That's number one. And number two, ventral rectopexy fixes the rectum very low down. And sometimes, if you have a very high takeoff, you know, if you have a very high takeoff, say, in the mid-rectum, then actually the ventral rectopexy does not address to the takeoff point. Here we have the advantage, at least theoretically, that we can see the takeoff point and all the sutures, all the endoluminal fixation is done above the apex of the prolapse. 
So possibly we'll have uh, less recurrence in the long term, but that has to be evaluated. And I would say it's especially good for very morbid patients. As you know, most of these patients are very old, they're fragile, they, I mean, they don't uh, tolerate general anesthesia well, so probably it might be beneficial for them. Mm, yeah, brilliant innovation. Just want to ask regarding the posterior fixation, is it very important to go into that submucosal tunnel? You know, can yeah. you not just make a full, full thickness? Full thickness, kind of as, you, as you saw, you know, we ha initially we did have a series of uh, rectal rectal abscess, but of course the advantage is that's uh, the extra peritoneal space, it's not intraperitoneal. So therefore many of these patients would respond to, uh, you know, conservative measures as our patients did, but making a through or through fixation would increase the chance of, uh, you know, having uh, pelvic abscess. sepsis and right. retrorectal abscess, yeah. okay. So you okay. should have a mucosal cover. Right, okay. In a Good. suture rectopexy, we take a deep bite to the uh, trans… here. Yeah. In a, in a suture rectopexy, we take a deep bite to the uh, presecral fascia and a rectum, but uh, in this case, we have just fixed with a uh, few tackles. No, no, see. The thing is… Uh, uh, so how does… I'm just wondering because uh, it's only… the depth is only a few mm. So, will it hold it's, it for a longer period of time? It's a deep ready tack uh, device, uh, uh, like tack, it's about 8 millimeters in length, uh, it's, okay. it's the deep version and when you actually, you know, you can actually uh, push through the posterior rectal wall, sometimes you actually enter into the uh, uh, so mesorectum rectum from inside okay. and you know, you, you, you have to ensure that you strike against the sacral promontory and then, and then only you fire. So, 8 mm means it will go into the bone? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you have to actually feel the bone to, before you fire, you know. Yes, sure. You have to push the tacker device through the tunnel, maybe through the posterior wall of the rectum and under fluoro you have to first see that your tacker device is touching the sacral promontory and then, you'll, then only you see, fire. See, entire, entire rectum is being pulled by the anterior sutures. So, yeah. we need a, a, a good traction before firing that. So, uh, do you feel that anterior traction is strong enough to k uh, keep that uh, yeah. tension? Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, as I tell you, we have a subset of patients which were really morbid because, you know, for doing the posterior tunneling, you require at least epidural or spinal anesthesia, you know, if not general anesthesia. So, man, some of these patients are not even fit for that. So, in those patients, we just did anterior fixation and it worked well, you know, uh, just under sedation. I, I must congratulate you. I mean, it's very innovative. Thank you very much. Just one point to add. I mean, when you are doing a posterior suture rectopexy, excuse me, when you are doing a posterior suture rectopexy, you are taking a bite of the seromuscular layer of the rectum with the sacral promontory. It is no way different from this technique. So, the issue of thickness remains the same in both cases. No, no. What he is telling is the transluminal uh, taking bite of the posterior rectopexy. But you don't take the full uh, thickness uh, of the rectum when no, you no, do no. a posterior uh, suture uh, rectopexy. There is a technique where through the rectum you enter, take a bite dip through the mucosa, serosa and the mu uh, muscle. Full that's thickness. What, that, you, there, that, there is a technique. Taking a transmural suture would transmural enhance… Transmural suture. Would, that would enhance the chance of… South, you know, of infection. Abs in, abs that yeah. say, in, the, in the same yeah. go, I am asking you, any anterior abdominal wall fistula formation no, you have, we have come across? We did have, uh, you know, we did have a series of infections, you know. But if you see the anterior sutures, they are not, they, they, that's not a single hole. They are two points, you know, yeah. two uh, very thin points, less than about, uh, you know, two or three millimeters. So, in the sense, uh, it's not, not a hole which we make in the anterior wall. It's just two sutures and a small, you know, knot. And if you follow these patients about six to eight months, you don't see the knot at all. It's covered by the mucosa. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Excellent. You. Compliments for your innovative ways. I have uh, noticed your remarkable study of that uh, anal sphincter, pyloric uh, sphincter or anal incontinence also. And this is also very remarkable. But I was wondering, how much fibrosis does this suture will make? Uh, so the long term follow up will be awaited. Yeah, see, we, we have long a term follow up will be awaited. We have a follow up about uh, two and a half years which we two published. But see, generally, uh, by, the, by, by the end of six to eight months, uh, you know, you have enough uh, adhesions to, you know, fix the rectum okay. anteriorly as well as posteriorly. So you are expecting a good follow up of these yeah, of results? Course, yeah, yeah, okay. we are following Thank the patient. Yeah. I think there is no other question. Thank, Thank you, Dr. Chandra, for a wonderful presentation. Thank, Thank, you, Thank you. And we conclude the session.